Hello, class. Uh, today, I'm going to be giving you a little introduction to Scratch. Um, I know some of you have used Scratch in the past, whether that be on your own or maybe in sixth grade. Um, but I'm just going to give you an introduction. It's going to be an ed puzzle, so there'll be some questions that pop up as we go. Um, it's just going to be a lot easier than me trying to explain it in front of the whole class or have you do some sort of vocab sheet. Um, but this is Scratch. This is what it looks like. And the first thing I want you to do when you go on to Scratch is actually click Join Scratch and make an account. Um, so create a username, create a password. Um, it might ask you a few other questions, but create an account. Um, I won't have access to your username and password, so I recommend you just make it your Canvas username and your Canvas password. That way you don't lose any of it, or if you forget it, you don't um, lose it forever because it'll it'll be saved and you'll be able to log back in. Um, if you get your stuff, you're kind of just out of luck and you have to restart. Uh, and I won't feel bad because I just told you all to use your Canvas stuff. Um, so this is what Scratch looks like. This here, this cat is called a sprite. Um, so it's like your characters. Um, and then you can always add more by choosing a sprite. So they have all different kinds of sprites. So they have animals that you can add to be characters. They have people you can add. They have fantasy stuff, dances, music, sports, food, fashion, letters. All different things you can add. Like if I wanted to add a crab, I click crab, and now I also have a crab in my game. Um, the other thing that's really important to add before we get started is the backdrop. You can choose any sort of backdrop. Um, like if I wanted this blue sky, now I have a blue sky background. Um, for your sprites, you can also change the size. If I wanted my crab to be smaller, because I don't know why that crab is bigger than my cat, I can change the size to 30, and now it's just a tiny little crab that I can make crawl around on the bottom. Um, you see, you also see here you have the X and the Y axis. Um, hopefully in math class you know what this is by now. My sixth graders had no idea what it was, but hopefully you know what the X and Y axis is. X, just think of a straight line going left to right. Y, of a, y being a straight line going up and down. And then in the middle of that is the point zero, zero. So everything in front of the X axis, everything going this way is going to be a positive X. Everything going this way will be a negative X. Everything going up and down, this will be a positive Y. This will be a negative Y. Um, so the reason the crab is at 62, X 62, so it goes 62 this way. And then Y negative 161, which is right there. Um, hopefully that made sense. If not, I can explain it a different time. Um, but I'm trying to make this video short and get through it as fast as possible. Um, so you're not just sitting here watching Ed Puzzle all class. Um, so events. Um, these are what I would call the starter blocks. These are the blocks you're going to use first. Um, you notice how all of these blocks kind of look like puzzle pieces. Um, how you can put stuff above it and below it and they all kind of fit together. The event blocks are different. They have a rounded top, so you can't put any pieces above them. That's why I call them the starter blocks. Um, so like this one, when space key is pressed. Anytime you see one with an arrow like this, it's a, it'll drop down and it'll let you change. So I can change it to up arrow, down arrow, right arrow, left, over, left arrow, or any different key or number um, on the keyboard that'll let me um, do whatever I want with that key. So for me, I'm going to do a win space pressed. And um, one of your first assignments in this game is going to be making a jump game. So I'm going to make my, I'm actually going to make my cat jump. So if I change the cat, notice how I have to replace the blocks when I switch. So switching to cat and then I can do this motion. Um, so I want my cat to jump about a hundred units high and then come down. So if I have repeat 10 times, and since he's going up and down, we're going to use the Y axis. So we have it change Y by 10. And then if we have it repeat again, and then change Y by negative 10, this will make the cat jump up and down. So now when I click space, watch what happens to my cat. Up and down. So my cat just jumps. Um, that is a really simple thing you can do. There's another really simple things you can do with these blue motion blocks. Um, so like you can have your cat turn. So like it would just quite literally rotate. See how he is, his angles turning and the cats are rotating. Um, you can have it glide to a random position. So when I would click space, 
the cat will literally just go somewhere random on the screen. Um, so that is another fun one you can play around with. Um, you can have it glide to a certain spot. You can have it um, change if you have it, change X by ten, so it would go left and right instead of going up and down. Um, a whole lot of different things you can do with the motion blocks. Um, the next main set of blocks, these are called the look blocks. Um, so these blocks are used to switch backdrops, to switch color effects. Um, so like another assignment we're going to have is making your name in Canvas and having your name when you click something do different things. So like now I can say when we get rid of the space key and we'll we'll choose a different event block and we'll go when this sprite is clicked on. So when I click on the crab, it changes the color effect of the crab by 25. So now when I click on my crab, the color of the crab changes. Um, so then that's a good example of the look blocks. Um, you can read through and see what some of these other ones do too. Um, throughout this unit, we're not going to be using every single block. Um, just mostly the simple ones, kind of getting your feet in the ground. Um, understanding how these blocks work. The next thing, sound. Um, so I'm going to go back to the sound block. And now I can add another when space pressed. If I go to sounds, I can make play sound meow. I don't know if you can hear a sound from my keyboard. But if I click the cat, if you hear the cat meows, if you can hear it, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it or not. You might just have to take my word for it that every time I press space, the cat meows. I'm going to change this orientation too so it's back to normal. Um, so now we have the cat and it jumps. Hopefully you can hear it meowing if not, but that's the sound blocks. Um, you can also um, add different sounds. Um, I can show you how to do this a different time as well. Uh, but if I click this sound button, I can basically add. There's a ton of different sounds. I'm not going to waste my time on this, but you can play around with this to add different sounds. Um, and then if I wanted to play the alert sound, I could switch it now from meow to alert. And every time I press space, it changes the alert sound. Um, next set of blocks are these are called control blocks. Uh, so this is used to like manipulate time or um, if then statements. Um, and you can have it set to like repeat or you can have it do stuff forever or whatever. So like for our crab, let's say we want it for to once we click it, we want it to just continue to change colors forever. So I can do when the sprite is clicked forever, change color effect by 25. So now I click on it and it just keeps going forever. It'll go until I hit this stop button. Um, you can also have it wait. So I could have it like do it a little slower. So now when I click on it, it waits one second and then it changes color, but it's still going forever. So it's slower now. Um, the other things you can do, um, we'll get into the if and then statement blocks too at a later date. So you can do like when we make the jump game, for example, um, you can say if the cat is touching, let's say the cat is trying to jump over the crab. If the cat is touching the crab, then the game stops. Um, or later, we're going to add a score variable. So if the score hits level 10, um, then it goes to the next level. Um, so that would be like an if-then statement. Um, we'll get more into that as the year goes on. Um, again, a few other blocks, like stop all blocks, clone blocks. Some of these we'll use, some of these we won't. Um, the next set of blocks is the sensing blocks. Um, so this would be blocks. These blocks would go hand in hand with the control blocks. So like if I have the if block and we want to say if sprite one or if the crab, and if we switch it to touching, if the crab is touching sprite one, so if it's touching the cat, then we could have, then we could have it do whatever. Then we could have it say switch to backdrop and say game over. Then we could have the game stop. Then we could have the crab make a sound. You could do all sorts of different things with these different variable blocks. Um, so if it's touching a certain color, if it's um, if the mouse is down, so if you're clicking, um, then it'll do something. Um, that's what all these sensing blocks can do. Um, so they go hand in hand mostly with these repeat blocks, with these if then blocks. Um, Operator blocks, 
we won't use these too much. Um, the only ones we will really use in this section will be the equals then or the greater than sign. Sometimes we'll use those. Um, so we can also like use this one. So like if something is greater than 50, um, so let's say if our score is greater than 50, then the backdrop switches to the next backdrop. It'll be like a level up kind of thing. Um, again, hopefully this is making a little bit of sense. I understand you might be confused on some parts, some parts, but hopefully as the year goes on, you will learn, or as the unit goes on, you will learn more and more. And what I'm saying will make sense. Um, we're almost done here. The last thing is the variable blocks. So I talked about making a score. Um, so like if I click make a variable and I call it score, and I click OK. Now you can see I have a score on this screen. Um, so then you can also set it to a change a variable. Um, so if I go cat and I go every time my cat jumps, I change the score by one. So now every time my cat jumps, score goes up by one. Um, and then eventually we get to the point where score, I jump over enough crabs, my score gets to level 30 and it would say like you win or it would say level up and you would make the game harder um, or there'd be all sorts of different things. Um, and that is about it. Um, again, there's a lot more details than this, but this is just a great introduction to what Scratch is all about. Um, we're going to see it started on some really simple assignments. Hopefully, you're going to work your way into doing some more complicated stuff. Um, I'll show you how to do some costumes. You can end up making your own sprites. Um, you can end up, I think, making your own backdrops. But we'll get all into all of that a later day. Uh, but as for now, if you made it through this video, hopefully it wasn't too long. Um, if you made it through this video, that is all I have for today. Um, so if you completed the app puzzle, you are good to just play games until the end of class.